Hey there everyone, Nubkex here, and in today's video we're going to dive into each of the DPS specs and break down exactly how they do damage, what are their damage profiles, what situations are they going to excel in, uh, both for you guys understanding your own spec and picking a spec, and also in terms of you know playing with specs in raids and in dungeons and picking a good group that's going to have the strength that you need for each sort of content. Uh, I actually got uh, several requests to do this after doing my you know best DPS specs for raid and best specs for Mythic Plus videos where I obviously touched on some of these damage profiles and gave some examples. A lot of people asked, hey, can you dive in and actually break this down further? Um, <clears throat> Dratnos actually did some videos where he, he really focused on this stuff, and I, I've actually copied that because I think it's such a good template to actually understand how stuff works in the game. He, he, his was slightly different, but broadly speaking, it was this. So we're going to be comparing um, sustained damage versus burst damage. So sustained damage is obviously your damage is at a very steady rate, whereas burst damage is, you know... Uh, so for, yeah, you can see some examples down here. Burst damage is, you're going to do loads of damage all at once, and then it's really going to drop off, and you're going to do almost nothing to your cooldowns come back, and then boom, loads of damage, right? And again, we're going to start, like, this is, you can, you're sort of a mix of sustain and burst, and then mostly, like, slightly sustained, very sustained, or, again, going further on this spectrum is slightly bursty or very bursty, right? And we're going to also compare uh, ramp-up damage versus on-demand damage. Um, so ramp up means that it's going to take you a while to get going, right? You have, start, you have to usually, you know, apply lots of dots to the targets. You have to build up your resources. It's slow to get going, whereas on demand is I press my DPS button and bam, I'm just hitting that guy. I hit him really hard. The damage is just, it's, it's done straight away. There's no messing about. Like an ad spawns in and I just hit it and I'm blasting. Um, single target versus AoE then. This is a big one. Uh, so specs that are going to be better. Uh, this, uh, you know, this one's a little loose in the sense that <laughs> there's some some judgment that has to come in here. But specs that are going to excel more in purely single target situations than specs that do well in AOE. I'm also going to put special mention because this is Shadowlands, and as of yet, this is fairly unchanged. But the uncapped AOE situation, where as you guys probably know, Blizzard has come in and they've added AOE caps to lots of abilities in the game. So typically speaking, abilities oftentimes they're going to be hitting a maximum of five targets or they're going to do you know normal damage up to five targets and then it's really going to start falling off very quickly there are though several abilities and some very notable ones and i'm going to point those out for each spec might not get every single one for each spec but i'll point out some of the biggest ones and some of these are really big and they will do full damage up to 20 targets which is could be a huge deal for Mythic Plus. This could really define things. So I'm just pointing it out, it out now. Personally, quite hoping this might change and be adjusted, but also personally a little bit worried that it won't be. I've also put in some bonuses. So execute damage is a bonus. I think that's important. That's something I've noticed in lo like lots of the dungeons, especially. There's lots of bosses that get more dangerous as the fight goes on, or where, when they're near death, they're extremely dangerous. Um, even the, the, this, uh, the seasonal affix from Mythic Plus, right, he's doing a stacking damage. His, his damage ramps up and up and up, the prideful mobs. You want to kill him quickly, and execute can kind of tie into that. It gives you power when, you know, mobs are nearly dead. Split Cleave, I've also put in as a bonus. This is the ability to do decent damage to two different mobs that are far apart. So let's say they're 30 yards apart. Can I do da good damage to both of them at the same time? Two target cleave is, is somewhat similar to this. Um, but not necessarily split. So they could be two targets beside each other. So some specs are going to be very, very good when there are two targets. They're just going to excel. They're going to get extra bonuses there, whereas other specs aren't going to get anything special. And then funnel is similar to these, but funnel essentially means if there are multiple targets, Elemental Shaman is the, is the best example of this. With Elemental Shaman, I put up flame shocks on, different, on like three different targets, right? And when, when each of those flame shocks does damage, I've got a chance to get a, an instant cast of of lava burst right it gives me the lava surge proc which lets me do an instant cast uh lava burst uh, i think guaranteed crit lava burst as well and i can just keep throwing that onto my main target like onto the boss let's say we're fighting a boss with some ads just flame shock those ads they give me way more lava bursts which i just throw at the boss and i can do way more single target damage for the very very low investment of just putting out a few flame shocks you know a couple of gcds here and there massively increases my single target damage that is funnel so yeah right Let's dive into it, right? Let's let's go. Death Knight. Frost is a bit complicated. Let's look at Unholy first. So with Unholy, I think Unholy leans a bit more towards burst damage, but slightly so. Um, and the reason for that is that they have a lot of, of 
fairly big damage cooldown. So, I mean, most noticeably would probably be Army of the Dead, which is, you know, by default, this big eight-minute cooldown. Uh, you can talent into things like Summon Gargoyle, big three-minute cooldown. So those cooldowns do big damage. That being said, Apocalypse is on 1.3-minute cooldown, which is a weird number, but it is, it's there. And that's a fairly short cooldown. Uh, and you can do very good sustained AoE damage, which is, you know, spreading your virulent plague and popping Epidemic. Um, so, yeah, I, I think... I think they're slightly more towards burst. You know, they're reliant on death and decay to do damage in AOE, a lot of it as well. But they, they're kind of not as crazy bursty as others. In terms of ramp up versus on demand, these are one of the big examples of massively ramp up uh, on the ramp up side of the spectrum, right? The unholy DK, they have to stack up wounds on their target first um, uh, so that they can then pop those wounds. They have to build up runic power. They've got loads of cooldowns, which they need to pop to actually get going into their rotation. Uh, like when it goes into AoE, you need to get like wounds on the target, you need to get your death and decay down, you need to get your plague on them, and then you can start doing damage. It takes a long time to actually do damage to anything that's unholy DK. You're not going to be insta-bursting anything. And then in terms of single target versus AoE, I think they're pretty solid at single target, but I do think that they shine most in AoE. That's where unholy DK really makes its name. So I've put them over here. Um... In terms of uncapped AoE for Unholy DK, they've got a number of abilities. So Death and Decay, Viral and Plague, they're uncapped for AoE. You can have those on up to 20 targets at a time, like doing damage. That's cool. Sweeping Claws is pretty significant. Sweeping Claws is um, your ghouls. AoE, uh, our basic attack, it's like his basic energy spender when he's transformed into the monstrosity, I believe. So that is uncapped AoE, which is pretty strong. Epidemic as well, which is your AoE runic spender. That can hit, so what Epic, Epidemic does is just a burst of damage, and that hits up to 20 targets. Then those targets will explode, and they'll hit up to six targets near them. So it's kind of like, it's fairly uncapped, like this scales really, really well. Then they also have some talents like Unholy Blight, which is just, um, it's, I think it lasts about 10 seconds, and just like does some AoE damage and applies your, your Virulent Plague to stuff. Increases pet damage to them as well. Unholy Pact, you do this big flaming chain between you and your pet. That is also uncapped. And then all of their Covenant abilities. Well, not Kyrian, because that's just a single target. Not sure how the Conduit for it works, though. But the Necrolord, uh, the, the Venthyr, Night Fae, all of those are uncapped for AoE. You can do full damage up to 20 targets. So the more targets, the better. Needless to say, Unholy has an awful lot of abilities that are uncapped AoE. Arguably, you could push them even more towards here, but I don't want to give the impression that they're bad in single target because I think they're going to be pretty decent. They also have a bonus of Execute. So Soul Reaper, I believe it's called, is a talent for them. Um, it's just another uh, rune spender ability uh, that does its bonus damage and Execute, right? It's good for Execute. So it's I think it's a small thing. It's not a huge deal, but that is kind of nice, a bit of single target Execute damage. It's small, but it's there. So that's my sort of take on Unholy DK. For the Frost DK, then, this is this one is a bit complicated because there's two, I think, very different uh, different builds. You've got the Obliterate build. This is going in with a two-handed weapon, which, with the new passive in Shadowlands, does 35% bonus damage on Obliterate. So that's a single target hit. Um, I feel like with that Obliterate build, then, that is actually quite sustained damage, right? You're just you're firing off these obliterates very consistently, and they're always just doing really good damage. Um, it becomes particularly strong during Pillar of Frost which is your cooldown, but Pillar of Frost is only a 45 second cooldown. So I think that you're actually quite good on the sustain damage there. I think it's also very on demand. Like you, you press Obliterate, you hit them really hard. And that's that's most of that, right? That is most of that. In terms of single target versus AoE then, it is obviously single target. You're hitting a single target and that's it. With one exception, which is a bonus for two target cleave, where the Night Fae a, a Covenant ability just got reworked and this now makes your Obliterate cleave to a second target. So in that situation, with two targets stacked up on each other with the Night Fae thing, you stack your, your Night Fae uh, Death's Dew, like your Death and Decay, with Obliterates uh, and like your, your, uh, your Pillar of Frost, and you're going to do massive two target cleaves. That is worth pointing out. Now, the other big build is your Breath of Syndragosa build, right? So Bre Breath of Syndragosa is a two-minute cooldown. Um, it starts draining your runic power, and then you just breathe in front of you. And this is actually capped AoE, right? So it's sort of like square root formula. So essentially, it does the main damage to your main target but then like the damage falls off based off of how many targets there are and it falls off fairly quickly it's kind of weird matsy we might do another video going more into the, the aoe cap stuff in more detail but for now that's what you need to know with breath of Cindergosa, it's fairly bursty right it's a two minute cooldown that being said you can get very good uptime on it so it's not like you know you're doing massive damage every two minutes for 10 seconds and then it's just gone this can go for like 30 seconds or 
even more depending on some crazy situations so you're going to do very high damage for that for quite a while but then once it's gone your damage is bad so i've put it definitely more towards the bursty side they're not like crazy bursty like some of the other specs for ramp up on de versus on demand again i think this one is a little bit difficult to say uh like once you press that breath of syndragosa it's it's going it's doing its damage um but it's about it's kind of about the duration of it right so it's very high damage but for a moderately long duration so i kind of put it somewhat here in the middle you have to build up your runic power and get ready to go into your breath um but yeah, I, I kind of count that somewhere in the middle. And then for single target versus AoE, again, it's very good single target, but I think it's also good in AoE, right? It's just automatically cleaving onto different targets. So for some nice, like decent AoE burst damage, um, Breath of Syndragosa on like a, a, a medium number of targets, like five to, to, to eight or so, is going to do really good AoE damage. So I put it more towards that side of the spectrum. For uncapped AoE for the Frost DK, Death and Decay, obviously it's small damage, but it's there, it's uncapped. We have some big ones though. Frostworm's Fury. This is a three minute cooldown. And this is a big, massive chunk of AoE damage. You summon in your Frostworm, he flies over targets and he just blasts them. That is uncapped AoE damage right now. So that's a huge nuke, AoE nuke on a big three minute cooldown. Remorseless Winter. This is sort of like your, your core rotational AoE ability. That is also uncapped. And there's several like uh, conduits and legendaries and talents and stuff that can amp that up. So that's good uncapped AoE. Avalanche, Frozen Pulse. They're fairly small deal things. Not a big deal, but that is a bit of, you know, minor talents that increase some uh, uncapped AoE. Glacial Advance may be more significant. This is a runic power spender for Frost, which is... Um, it's a talent as well, but that is currently uncapped AoE. So this may actually be good because of that lack of cap. Potentially, it's something to keep an eye on. Like perhaps with Obliterate, you'll just be doing good single target damage with Obliterate and spending with Glacial Advance or some good AoE. Not sure, but worth pointing out. And then again, the Covenant abilities are uncapped. Looking at the Havoc Demon Hunter. Havoc Demon Hunter is, I, I think, you know, it's... It, it does what it does and it's very straightforward i actually put them in the middle in terms of sustain versus burst um the reason being they they do have like you know i beam is a 30 second cooldown and that does a big burst of single target damage and big cleave damage uh you know like obviously it's not uncapped it does fall off with more targets but that's going to do a big chunk of aoe damage you can talent into things like fell barrage which is a big one minute cooldown this is a big chunk of i think it's eight target cap uh, AoE damage. You've got your new uh, Spinny Glaive talent as well. <laughs> That's the official name, Spinny Glaive talent, um, which is five target AoE. That does a big chunk of, of AoE burst on a 20 second cooldown. You've got lots and lots of cooldowns, and they're fairly short cooldowns, but those cooldowns themselves do quite a lot of burst. You've got a lot of on demand burst, I would say. So I've put them sort of in the middle here. You know, they're, they're going to be doing, they're going to be able to do damage fairly consistently. Like, it's not the case of going like, okay, I can do big damage every three minutes. And then for the other, like, two and a half minutes, like, pff, whatever, man. I'm just here, you know, I'm just here eating popcorn. I'm just here for moral support. You know, no, they're always going to be doing damage. But then they also have these cooldowns that do substantial burst damage, noticeable burst damage. So I'll put them in the middle. For Rampa versus On Demand, they are obviously massively On Demand. They are totally on this side of the spectrum, Havoc Demon Hunter. You press your I-beam, you're shooting a big eye laser at them, you're doing lots of damage. There's really no ramping up. You just, you're just, you press your button and you're blasting and that's it. I've also put them very much so on the AoE side of the spectrum, although they do have a lot of target caps, which could pull them a bit back towards here. There are as well, I think, some single target builds. So it remains to be seen how those single target builds will do. But I think generally speaking, you know, like I already mentioned, I-beam, uh, blade dance a lot of your abilities are just naturally cleaving they're naturally doing aoe damage you've got lots of talents which enhance your aoe damage i really think that havoc demon hunter shines when it comes to aoe so that's why i put them over this far on the spectrum i really think that's where they're going to be good i'm gonna they're gonna give you they've got lots of these burst cooldowns right on demand aoe damage that's where i think havoc's gonna be really really good uncapped aoe is pretty miserable for them um, Immolation Aura does have some conduits and stuff that go with it, right? And Immolation Aura is uncapped, so that might become more significant, maybe, in Shadowlands. Uh, Inner Demons is a legendary, where your Chaos Strike is a chance to summon an Inner Demon, which will crash into your enemies, and that is uncapped AoE damage, although the proc rate, last time I tested it, was abysmal. Then the Curian Covenant is uncapped AoE. And the Venthyr Covenant ability, Sinful Brand, that's just a single target ability, but it does have an added bonus when you press Metamorphosis. 
that will apply uncapped sinful brands, which is an insane chunk of, of burst, an insane chunk of burst. Uh, that is worth noting, like Metamorphosis is a four minute cooldown for Havoc. It's a really long damage cooldown. Um, but I, I don't feel like they overly rely on it. It's powerful and that might pull them a little bit more towards here, but I, I do feel like their damage is very sustained. So yeah, with Havoc, target caps is definitely a big question mark for them, but I think generally speaking, they've got lots of on-demand, lots of on-demand AOE damage. That's where they shine. Again, to cover the Death Knight strengths for Unholy, it's, it's again having really good burst AOE. I think it's where they shine, but they've got lots of ramp up. For Frost DK with Breath of Syndragosa, it's this really good sustained burst with Breath of Syndragosa. Um, that's going to do really good single target, but also really good AOE damage. Or you go for the Obliterate build, which is really good single target damage um, or potentially two target cleave. Looking at the Druids then, right? <clears throat> so for Feral Druid, I put everything on this left-hand side of the spectrum. So Feral Druids are very sustained. That's straightforward, right? They're applying lots of bleeds, right? You're stacking up bleeds on your targets. Those bleeds are just ticking over. Very sustained damage. Ramp up, they have lots of ramp up. You've got to go in. You've got to get your bleeds on the target. It takes time. You've got to generate your combo points, wait for your energy. They're all about ramping up. They're also, I think, very much single target focused. Um... It's okay. So for uncapped AOE, let me point this out first. So you got Thrash, which is your AOE bleed. So you can put that on, on AOE. But then, like your single target bleed, you can multi target a little bit with that, but it's quite limited. Primal Wrath is worth noting because it is currently uncapped AOE. This is a talent finishing move um, that applies a short duration rip, which is your main finishing move bleed, that applies that in AOE. So, ironically, because this has no target cap for whatever reason, that could actually pull them more towards being decent in AoE, applying these AoE rips on, like, up to 20 targets at a time. So, that could potentially be very good. Um, but generally speaking, I think that they do lean a lot more towards single target where they can stack up their bleeds on a single target and then start unloading ferocious bites into them. They can multi dot a little bit. Primal Wrath, though, is the thing that could put it off. But I've put them over here. Arguably, you could move them up here because of this uncapped... This is the uncapped AOE, unless it changes, the thing that could throw a wrench in, but that's sort of what I think. I also give them a small bonus for funnel damage with Tiger's Fury. There's a talent, I forget what it's called, at level 15. Um, Tiger's Fury is this short 30 second cooldown that gives you a chunk of energy and just boosts your damage for like 10 seconds. You get a talent, which makes that ability reset whenever a target with your bleeds on it dies, right? Which means that in sort of like if you're fighting in Mythic Plus, for example, and mobs are dying like quite regularly, you can get like Tiger's Fury back lots and lots and lots, and you can turn that extra energy into extra single target damage. I think it's a fairly weak form of funnel, but I think it's worth pointing out. Show the Feral some love. So that's where I sort of think of that. But generally speaking, I think this is one of the reasons why Feral struggles. I think that this is a, a very unenviable talent profile. I would say that generally speaking, burst your damage tends to be a little bit, a little bit more useful. Um, and on-demand damage also tends to be a little more useful. Uh, so yeah, having these two being like very sustained ramp-up damage isn't necessarily the best thing. And then they do struggle with AoE, aside from Primal Wrath. They struggle very much so with AoE. Um, so yeah, that's something to note. For Balanced Druid then. <clears throat> so Balanced Druid, this one is also a little bit tricky. Again, I put them bang in the middle because they do fairly sustained damage, right? They do fairly sustained damage, but then they have the big three-minute cooldown in Celestial Alignment or Incarnation, Chosen of a Loon, where they become the Uber Moonkin and they start blasting. Um, so that's obviously a big bursty three-minute cooldown. And certainly if you go for the Venthyr Covenant, which is another big sort of ramping bursty three-minute cooldown and you stack those together, their burst damage could actually become quite significant. They'd probably move up this scale. I'm going to put them as generally speaking, like certainly in AoE, they're going to be doing fairly sustained damage. So I, I, I'm going to put them sort of here, oops, <laughs> sort of here. I think they do have some big bursts, but they also have some decent sustain. So I'm putting them in the middle for now. For ramp up versus on demand, I'm going to consider that they have a decent-ish like they've got a little bit of ramp up here, a little bit of ramp up. Like you have to generate astral power, which is very slow in Shadowlands. Um, you have to get into your eclipses, which is pretty slow. Uh, in particular, you have to alternate between the eclipses when you don't have your big burst cooldown. You have to alternate between the eclipses. So if you want to do really good AOE damage, but you've just finished your AOE eclipse, you got to wait until that single target eclipse. You got to get into your single target eclipse. You got to wait for that to expire, then back into your AOE eclipse. So, you know, it's not the case that you can go, hey, these AOE mobs just spawn. Can you blast them? For a balanced druid, you're kind of going, well, I got I to gotta wait for my eclipse, right? So put them over here. They also have to apply their dots and stuff. 
single target versus AoE. Again, this one's a bit tricky. I put them in the middle because they can kind of do both. Their single target damage is okay. Um, and they can certainly talent into more single target stuff. In AoE, I think they're actually a lot better in, in Shadowlands because of Starfall. Starfall does really good AoE damage. So um, I, I think because of that, they could actually do some, some pretty good AoE damage too. So I put them in the middle. I think they can be pretty decent at both. So yeah, I'm putting them here. Again, you could swing it slightly on the spectrum for sure. I put in a bonus then with Split Cleave and I kind of rank them as moderate split, split Cleave. They do have dots. They can multi-dot, but the dots are quite weak. However, Starfall does fairly good damage. So it remains to be seen. Perhaps this might just be like just a, a minor benefit. That might be all it is. But if, you know, if you're fighting a number of mobs and they're split apart, Starfall is going to do good damage. The dots are going to, you know, they'll add up over time. So I think their split cleave might be relatively decent. And split cleave is relatively rare. So I have noted it as a strength here. For their uncapped AoE, then, of course, Starfall, the big one. This is uncapped AoE, and it does a lot of damage. So that's a huge Starfire, which is your AoE filler. That is uncapped. And with your AoE Eclipse, that can potentially do some decent damage. Sunfire, which is your AoE applicating dot, also is uncapped. So there's a number of fairly big uncapped AoE things here for balance that might make them shine more, especially Mythic Plus and AoE with that Starfall. We'll see. For the Hunters, we have three Hunter specs, quite a bit to get through. So Beast Mastery, I put them very much on the sustain side of things. They're kind of always just pumping out damage. Uh, Bestial Wrath, their main cooldown. It's a very short cooldown. They're like always popping into that. So they're really very, very, very sustained. For Ramp Up versus On Demand, again, they're very On Demand. Like you just, you know, you're pressing your buttons, your pets attacking. There's really no Ramp Up. They're just always going. For Single Target versus AoE, they can really do both. Um, you know, with Beast Cleave, it is only a five target cap now. Uh, but, you know, you can keep that going consistently. They can consistently be beast cleaving. They can do consistent single target. They can really do both. For their uncapped AoE, they're very limited, as you can see. So there's the Stampede and Stomp Talents. Um, Stampede is a big two-minute cooldown, which is a big chunk of AoE. That is uncapped, and that could see some use, actually. Stomp, though, which is just some minor AoE damage whenever you do Barb Shot, which is one of your core rotational abilities. Um, your pet does the Stomp attack. That is uncapped AoE as well. So, yeah, they compete with each other. Then there's the Soulforge Embers Legendary. That is also uncapped right now. So for some massive AoE pulls, that might see some use. They also have the bonus of Execute with Kill Shot. Uh, for Beast Mastery Hunter, this is relatively weak. They also have a talent at level 15, which gives them some Execute. But I don't think that's really tuned that well. So I don't know if that will actually see much use. So I've kind of left it out here, but just note that. But I think Kill Shot for Beast Mastery Hunter isn't the strongest thing. Their, um, you know, their mastery buffs their pet damage. So I think it's okay. It's worth noting, but it's not crazy. For Marksmanship, I've put them, they are fairly sustained damage, but I put them a bit more towards the bursty end of the spectrum. They have a talent called Volley, which has been reworked for Shadowlands, and that on about a 50 second cooldown gives them a good chunk of, a decent chunk of AoE burst damage. Um, and uh, I think True Shot definitely like ups their damage a bit, but they are mostly sustained damage, I think. They're mostly sustained damage, but they are going to be noticeably, I think, a little bit burstier than the Beast Mastery Hunter. For Ramp Up versus On Demand, again, I think they're very On Demand. You cast your Aim Shot, your Aim Shot hits things really hard, and it, that's really, that's really all there is. For single target versus AoE, as you can see, in terms of uh, uh, capped AoE, they are very capped on AoE. Um, right With their trick shot, they're hitting, what, is it like four targets or something for the most part? So they're very limited on their AoE targets. That being said, their damage right now is very good. They also have the volley talent, which I already mentioned, which does a really good chunk of burst AoE on a, a relatively short cooldown, about 45 seconds. Soul for Embers Legendary is also uncapped AoE. So... I think that they can do really good single target damage. Arguably, you could put them over here for sure. But I think their AoE damage, uh, if with the target, you know what? I'm actually going to move it. I've decided. <laughs> We're going to move it. We're going to move it. <laughs> I think they're a bit more single target, but they do have some good AoE. Like their AoE damage is no, is no slouch. I don't know. Maybe we'll put it back. It's hard to say, right? But yeah, marksmanship. I, I just want to make it clear. Like in BFA, their AoE was terrible because they had target caps and no one else did. But with most specs having target caps, their AoE is good. That being said, if you're doing something like if you're playing with a balanced druid and doing massive pulls with Starfalls, they're really not going to be able to keep up with that. So we'll see. Um, I think kill shot for marksmanship is really strong. They've got talents which enhance kill shot, gives them like two charges, makes their aim shot recharge faster when they kill shot. So I think in execute, they're really going to shine. That's where marksmanship is going to be very, very good. Um, so yeah, I think they've got the best execute out of all the hunter specs. For survival, then, survival is much, it's fairly sustained damage, right? 
uh, it's fairly sustained damage. You're just always going through your your um, your mongoose bite cycles. That's always going. Your your cooldowns aren't that powerful, so I think they're quite sustained. You're just rolling your charges of your wildfire bombs. So there you are. For ramp up versus on demand, I put them there relatively on demand, like wildfire bomb in particular is doing a chunk of on demand damage. I think there's a little bit of ramp up in there with the mongoose bites, right? With mongoose bite, you want to you know build up your focus and then you want to dump your focus kind of all at once on those mongoose bites. So there's a little bit of ramp up there in terms of pooling your focus and then dumping it. So arguably they could swing slightly more towards this, but I think the rest of their damage is pretty on demand. Um, and then for single target versus AOE, We'll come to the target caps here because that really throws a, a, a wrench in the whole equation. But generally speaking, I would say that Survival Hunter has typically leaned towards being very single target focused. Again, Mongoose Bite is purely single target, right? Um, so they're very good at that sustained single target damage. That's what they excel at. However, I'm moving them a bit more towards the AoE side of the spectrum because of their uncapped AoE. So their Wildfire Bomb is currently uncapped AoE. And Wildfire Cluster, their legendary, which enhances Wildfire Bomb, is also uncapped AoE. So those Wildfire Bomb charges, they can do a lot of, a, a big chunk of AoE, of AoE DPS. I think it's quite powerful. Their Chakrams, Talents, and Soulforge Embers, again, are also uncapped. So, yeah, I mean, Wildfire Bomb, you only have so many charges. You can reduce the charges with Carve, which is like an AoE cleave attack, but that is target capped. Gives you a little bit of cooldown reduction as you hit it. I think generally speaking, I expect that they're still going to be mostly single target focused, but they can do a good burst of AoE damage with Wildfire Bomb. Kill shot for them is more powerful than the BM Hunter, or it should be, uh, but it's not going to be totally crazy. So arguably this could be just over, this could be like a weak execute thing, but it is worth knowing they do have some execute. For the mages, for mages, Arcane. Arcane is very, very bursty, right? Arcane is bursty. Um, you're going to go through your, your burn phases and your conserve phases. So, you know, every 45 seconds, probably a touch of the Magi and Rune of Power, you're going to blast damage really hard for about 8 seconds or 10 seconds, and then you're going to do very low damage for the rest of the time, generally speaking. So they're very bursty. They're all about their cooldowns. For ramp up versus on demand, they're mostly on demand. Like, you throw out that touch of the Magi, and you're just blasting, right? Touch the Magi, it does store up the damage that you deal, and then it explodes like 8 seconds later for 30% of that damage, even more, like up to, I think, about 50% with a fully ranked conduit enhancing it. I think it's 25% baseline, it goes up to like 40%, maybe, something like that. So I, I consider that to be slight ramp up, because you got to wait for the Touch of the Magi to actually explode. And if you need something like dead right now, as quickly as possible, you're kind of going, okay, well, I'm doing really good burst damage on demand here, but, you know... There's going to be a big chunk of damage coming eight seconds later. So that's why I've put them as slightly, slightly down from the on-demand, but they're fairly on-demand. Their AoE is fairly instant as well, though you do have to sort of like build up your charges and spend your charges. Uh, for single target versus AoE, I put them as notably, I think more so on the single target spectrum, though this does pull back more towards the middle for sure. In Shadowlands, now they have a dedicated talent here to AoE. Um, and Touch of the Magi is doing some, some cleave. Uh, though it is not uncapped. Such a match is not uncapped damage. But arguably, I think you could put them more towards over here. Uh, and you can build into AoE. It's going to depend on your build. You know what? I am actually going to move them over here. I think that makes a bit more sense. They've got really good single target damage, but their AoE is not bad. Arcane Explosion as well, notably, is uncapped AoE. Though your Arcane Charge Spender, Arcane Barrage, obviously is. Arcane Orb, the talent, is uncapped. Nether Tempest, Supernova talents are uncapped. And the Night Fae Covenant ability is uncapped as well. So... Those are a significant source of AoE, um, like their AoE cooldown, like their cooldowns don't particularly link, link up with AoE, like Touch of the Magi is really bad single target damage. Um, it doesn't work with AoE half as well or really well at all, because um, it's about build, stacking more damage on a single target and then that target explodes. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm going to put them here. I think that makes sense. For Fire Mage then, obviously Fire Mage is extremely bursty, right? The combustion bursts, um, that's a, a massive cooldown. 10 seconds of massive burst every two minutes. Uh, so they're really all about that combustion or that meteor playing around Rune of Power. It's really about that burst damage. I consider it's fairly on-demand damage. Like you pop combustion and you're blasting. Uh, so like whenever you have combustion, you're blasting. Whenever you, you have that meteor, you drop it down and you're blasting. So I think it is fairly on-demand. Like you're not... You're not waiting for, you know, you don't have to apply a bunch of dots and you don't have to like generate a bunch of resources. You just press combustion and go. But it is very bursty on demand damage. Like you're not going to be able to whip out damage whenever you want. It's just once, you know, once your, your burst CDs are there, you're going. For single target versus AoE, 
Um, I think they're actually good at both, right? Their single target burst uh, uh, with combustion is really good, but that also ends up being very good in AoE. You can spread that ignite around to multiple mobs. Um, you can spread that around uh, just fine, and that's going to do some good AoE damage. Those meteors you're going to be dropping are going to do pretty good AoE damage. Like you're going to do solid AoE damage with that. So I think their AoE damage is good. Um, but combustion is mostly about that. You know, they're, it's good at both, right? They're good at both things. You've seen that in Nihilotha. Uh, for uncapped AoE, Flame Strike notably is uncapped AoE right now, and the Flame Patch talent, which enhances it, is also uncapped as well. I think I forgot to put it in, but Conflagration here is also uncapped, which I think is a competing talent. Conflagration. Okay, cool. Uh, Dragon's Beth Breath is uncapped as well. And I think there are some talents and maybe legendaries that tie into Dragon's Breath damage, maybe conduits. So perhaps that could be somewhat significant we'll have to see uh, and then the night fake covenant again is uncapped so yeah flame strike is consistent you know it's fairly consistent uh uncapped aoe damage though it's not the best aoe sort of aoe spell at all like they're fairly weak at the moment i think but yeah that's the the fire mage again for execute they do have a talent searing touch i think which makes their scorch always crit when targets are in execute range which ups their damage which is not bad I've, consider, I've only put it as like a, a minor benefit, seeing as in combustion, where most of your damage is coming from, uh, everything is a crit anyway, so that's not a huge deal. But it, it is like an, a, a minor and pleasant DPS boost when you are in execute and you don't have combustion up, so that's worth noting. For Frost Mage, uh, for the Frost Mage, I think they're very sustained damage, right? Um, your Frozen Orb is, uh, I guess, your biggest burst cd but that has a very short cooldown and, and the cooldown of frozen orb gets reduced uh whenever you hit targets at blizzard so it's a very short cooldown you're throwing out frozen orbs all the time you're just very consistently firing off damage and building up to your glacial lan uh lances if you go in with that your glacial spikes etc for ramp up versus on demand you know what i think in hindsight i should actually put them like over here or maybe even maybe even in the middle it's okay this is a bit hard to say right so certainly in aoe the thing, the, the reason I think they are somewhat ramp up is that you're obviously dependent in single target. You're very dependent on procs and whether or not you get those procs is random. So that could, could be, certainly be considered quite a bit of ramp up. That being said, in AoE, your frozen orb, you're throwing that out. It's giving you guaranteed fingers of frost. Frozen orb does good damage itself. So that's very on-demand damage. You drop down your blizzard on cooldown. That's doing on-demand damage. It's reducing your, your, orb, uh, your frozen orb by a set amount. So that's all very on demand. It's kind of tough to say then. I think in single target, they're, they're, you know, it's you're at the mercy of some randomness. So I'd actually count them maybe over here. But I think in AoE, they're they're quite consistent on demand. Just, you know, Frozen Orb is consistent. You fire it off and you're going. Um, for single target versus AoE, I put them slightly towards AoE. Uh, the reason being this, right? Two target cleave is where they're really, really strong with splitting ice. So splitting ice makes their ice lance and glacial lance and ebon bolt. Uh, maybe, I think that's it. Hit a second target for a good chunk of damage, right? I think most of the damage. Um, so when it comes to AoE, like your frozen orb, right? I think it's capped at eight targets for frozen orb. But every time it damages a target for the first time, it gives you a, a finger of frost, which is a, a free ice lance that hits as if the target is frozen. So it does massive damage, right? That ice lance is going to hit your main target that you targeted at, and it's going to hit one other target. So in two target cleave, your ice lances, like your ice lance is going to do loads of damage on two targets. You're going to absolutely crush it with two targets. They're very, very, very strong at that. Um, so yeah, like you're going to be doing really good AoE damage with your frozen orbs and blizzards. And then those ice lances are going to do loads of damage. You're going to get loads of those ice lances, but they are going to do particularly, you're going to be able to focus down like a priority target and it's going to cleave a second target. So that's what you're looking at with the Frost Mage. So I think like generally speaking, oh yeah, so Blizzard is uncapped. Comet Storm, the talent is uncapped and the Night Fake Covenant is uncapped. I think generally speaking, when you look at the mages, right, what are their strengths? Where are you bringing them? Arcane Mage, you're going to bring if you want really good burst damage, uh, particularly for single target burst. That's where they're really going to excel. Uh, for Fire Mage, again, you're going to bring them if you want really big burst damage at that combustion, which is good for, you know, single target, but you can also make it cleave a bit by spreading the Ignite. So that's not that strong at the start of the expansion. They'll get better at AoE as the expansion goes on. They get more stats. Um, but yeah, single target, maybe a bit more, uh, maybe a bit more single target burst, similar to Arcane Mage. I expect Arcane looking right now that they're better than that, at that than Fire Mage is at the start of the expansion, but we'll see. And then Frost Mage, you're bringing them when you want very sustained damage really good at two target cleave um and they're also going to do really good aoe damage right so that's where they're going to really shine it's like in in aoe situations dropping in the frozen orb and then just pummeling targets at those ice lances very sustained that's what you're going to be looking for
with monks. Monks. We have the Windwalker Monk. The Windwalker Monk. So, I think they are more so sustained damage. Um, obviously, they're invokes when. They're Tiger, a big two-minute cooldown. That's a decent chunk of bursts. That's kind of noticeable. But they're generally speaking, you know, they're just rot going through the rotation. They're throwing out their Fist of Fury. They're throwing out their Rising Sun Kicks. They're Whirling Dragon Punches. And they're coming out pretty consistently. You have two charges of um of your storm earth and fire so you can kind of choose a little bit where to use those so i'm counting them slightly more towards the sustain side uh we'll see how strong invokes when ends up being that might pull them slightly more towards the burst but i think they're fairly sustained they're doing fairly decent damage most of the time uh for ramp up versus on demand again i think they're mostly on demand um, you do have a very specific rotation as the windwalker monk with your mastery you have to sort of rotate toward through your spells and it's kind of the rotation honestly it just kind of happens you don't have all that much control of it like you just kind of have to go through it and use stuff on cooldown and it's, it's sort of designed to naturally flow so that's why i've kind of put it over here it's like okay you press fist of fury you're doing really good damage but you know you have to do fist of fury in a particular order in your rotation so yeah i've kind of put them there just for that uh one nice thing is of course with um with storm earth and fire their cooldown having two charges you know, you can kind of choose when you use that second charge. That's quite under control. So that gives you some really good on-demand burst, right? Uh, even in AoE, especially with that, that that Storm Earth and Fire, you can kind of choose really when to use that second charge, which is nice. For single target versus AoE, again, I've leaned them a little bit more towards AoE. Just Storm Earth and Fire invokes when. They do good AoE damage too. Storm Earth and Fire really helps you ramp up your AoE damage a bit faster. Um, so I lean them a bit more towards that. They do have a bonus of execute with touch of death this is the rework touch of death for shadowlands it's a big cooldown it does a really big chunk of single target burst damage to finish off guys that are low on health so i think that's kind of nice uh, you know and it's got a big cooldown so you're not using this all the time by any means but it's a really big burst of damage quite good for a priority mob you really want to die so i put it over mm, kind of minor benefit but certainly a benefit for uncapped aoe it's very limited um Chi burst the talent is is uncapped aoe that's fairly weak quarreling dragon punch right now for whatever reason is uncapped uh, so that's nice. And then you've got the Jade Ignition Legendary where you're going to build up stacks of Jade Ignition. And then when you do a spinning crane kick, you're going to unleash them for some AoE damage. That is also apparently uncapped right now. And then the Necrolord and Night Fae Covenant abilities are also uncapped. But generally speaking, you're mostly playing with the target caps. So yeah, that's the Windwalker Monk. For the Rat Paladin, this is a really good example of a very bursty class. Um, they're all about like the execution sentence or a big single target burst. They're, they're Wings, they're Avenging Wrath, big two minute cooldown. Big burst damage in that cooldown. Pretty terrible damage outside of their CDs. Very bursty. Again, their damage is is pretty much on demand. Are you could put them over here, like execution sentence. You kind of have to wait for the ex execution sentence to proc, which does take eight seconds. Arguably, you can move them over there. But generally speaking, I would consider that you press wings and you're blasting. So I consider them to be relatively on demand. Um, yeah, and like, you know, just throwing out Divine Storms is just fairly consistent on-demand damage. For single target versus AoE, they can really do both. Though, as you see from the target caps, they are very target capped. Consecration, the damage is very low, but it is uncapped. And Sanctified Wrath, which combines the Light's Decree as right trait, it's a talent. Uh, it makes it so whenever you do spend Holy Power in Avenging Wrath, it will do an AoE. That AoE is uncapped. But generally speaking, they are limited by the target cap. But if you set that aside, they can do both single target or AoE big bursty damage you can pop wings and keep and spend all the holy power on divine storm you're going to do massive uh aoe albeit capped at five targets you can pop your wings and spend it all on uh, uh templar's verdict whatever the single target one's called and that's going to do really big single target um so yeah there you are again they're very 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 obviously all about that burst damage which is cool it's big burst damage and you can choose how do i want to spend this holy power do big burst AoE. I can do big burst single target. That's a nice thing about the uh, Rat Paladin then. It gives them a good niche in the raid. Even if their overall damage is low, which it has been historically, they often have low overall damage, yet they often succumb to these world first kills. They're often there. Why are they there? Because they have this big on-demand burst damage. You go, okay, there's like an ad that we really need to die, or there's a group of ads we really need to die. Who can kill these ads that we need to kill? And Rat Paladin's like, hey, hey, man. I got crazy burst damage. I'll kill them for you. I don't care. Big packet, like 20 ads just spawned. Okay, not so much in Shadowlands, but in BFA. Oh, like 10 ads, 20 ads just spawned in. I'm pop wings and I'm blowing them up. 
or oh there's this one there's one big ad coming in and he's gonna wipe us if he like crosses the room i'm gonna pop wings i'm gonna blow him up i got you and that's why I, a good chunk of why they always came, I think. Uh, they also have a small benefit, I think, in Execute. Hammer of Wrath is a baseline now ability. That's an extra holy power generator that works in Execute. I count it as a fairly minor benefit because you can cast Hammer of Wrath when you're in wings anyway. So it's just kind of helping your sustain damage a little bit in Execute outside of wings, which is nice, but it's not too crazy. Looking at Priest then, the Shadow Priest. This one is really different from BFA because this, this spec got totally reworked. So I'm, I, I've kind of been thinking through some of this. I certainly think when we get, we see more of the priests in action, I'll have a better idea of where this lands. But this is my thoughts on where the spec is right now. By the way, for BFA and Legion, they were extremely sustained, extremely ramp up. You got to ramp up those void form stacks. And then when you're up there, you're just doing very sustained damage and also very AOE. Just put your dots on everything. Then you ramp up your void forms and then just those dots just be doing loads and loads of damage because you ramped up your void form. So that's kind of their old target profile. It gets kind of, it's kind of hard to say because their talents really change things up. I'll obviously cover those. But for Sustain versus Burst, Sustain versus Burst, they're a lot more bursty than they were before. I generally speaking lean them more towards Sustain, though they've got some good Burst AoE now, which I'll come to from the talents. But generally speaking, you're going to put your dots on the target and then you're going to be like, just keep those Devouring Plagues rolling, be mind playing them. One big change is that Void Form is now a cooldown, right? It's a it's a 90 second cooldown, one and a half minute cooldown. It gives you a big burst of spell power and then a bunch of like instant cast or quick casting, instant damage, single target damage spells, right? So that is, it's a lot burstier than before. Like Void Form is going to be a noticeably different and noticeably bigger chunk of burst. That's going to stand out more. So they're definitely burstier than they were before. And there are talents that enhance that. Um, for ramp up versus on demand, I still count them as slightly more in terms of ramp up because you do have to apply your dots. That takes some GCDs to put your dots on. Uh, you have to generate insanity to spend, which does have a bit of ramp up. But they're certainly not as ramp up as they were before, right? Um, you're going to be go going into doing good damage significantly faster. Like in BFA, it would take you like a minute to do, or almost a minute to do your first big void form. And hell, if there was an intermission in the fight or something, your damage could be completely scuffed. Uh, like Mythic Nazoth is a great example. Very difficult to make Shadow Priest do good damage there. Um, in terms of single target versus AoE then, yeah, okay. There's a lot of stuff that's different here. So this is time to touch on the talents. We're going to look at the uncapped AoE. So Mind Seer is uncapped AoE. Void Eruption, obviously you're only doing this once every every 90 seconds now to go into Void Form. That's uncapped as well. Where it gets big is Searing Nightmare. Searing Nightmare only costs 30 insanity and you can have 100 sanity cap. That is uncapped AoE damage right now. So it does a decent chunk of damage. It puts Shadowward Pain on everything it hits. Again, at like 20 target cap AoE. And then subsequent casts do double damage if the target already has Shadowward Pain on them. So this is where Shadow Priest can be very different from the Shadow Priest you knew before, because you could do something like in Mythic Plus, you know, coming to the end of a mob pack, you can save up like a full bar of sanity, insanity. And then when you pull the next mob pack, you can just start channeling Mind Seer on them. And then you can spam like three Searing Nightmares in a row. The first one does moderate damage, puts Shadowward Pain on them. Then the next two are going to do massive chunks of AoE damage. And you probably build up to a fourth Searing Nightmare in the meantime by channeling the Mind Seer on those mobs. So they're, they actually have some decent AoE burst with Searing Nightmare. It can do quite a bit. It can do quite a bit. So like, for example, let's say you're in a boss fight and there's, uh, there's going to be like 10 mobs that are going to spawn in like under the boss and like maybe let's say hypothetically they spawn in under the boss and they start channeling a healing thing on the boss and you need to kill the mobs as quickly as possible whereas old shadow priest would be like well it's just wherever my void form stacks happen to be that's where i am and that's how much damage i'll do and then they slowly multi-dot them all again this new shadow priest could prepare for it again totally different damage profile they could prepare for it they could bank up some insanity those mobs spawn in and just poof, searing nightmare searing nightmare searing nightmare and that's a huge amount of on-demand aoe burst damage that's very different. Obviously that's talent based and that's somewhat situational, but that is something to keep in mind, which is why I'm sort of struggling to place them, right? That's why I'm struggling to place them. I think, yeah, they're, they're gonna be able to do good sustained damage. They can also build in some burst damage. Another big thing to touch on here is Surrender to Madness. We're gonna look at this. So in terms of execute, they have Shadow Word Death and they've got talents to build into Shadow Word Death, which is a good execute damage spell. Surrender to Madness though ties into execute and funnel. So this is a talent in their top level row, which got way better in Shadowlands. So it's a 90 second cooldown. When you press this, 
it, get, it activates void form. So you get your, your damage cooldown. You just get a second one for free. Cool. On top of that, it puts a 25 second debuff on your target and a 25 second buff on you that are linked together. It's going to double your insanity generation. So it's that's a massive burst damage increase while that 25 second buff is on you. And you can cast while you're moving, which is going to help your damage a lot as well. However, if your target... I think when your target dies, it still removes the buff from you. So you lose the Surrender to Madness buff. You lose the double insanity. You lose the cast while moving. But you keep the free void form. Um, but if the target doesn't die and that 25 second debuff on them expires, then you die. So it kills you. So I, I consider this to be sort of execute and potentially really powerful for Funnel. So again, if you're imagining in a boss fight, when a bunch of adds spawn in, this is where it gets difficult to rank these guys, right? Because let's say some ads spawn in. If you know, okay, these ads are going to live for about 20 seconds-ish, right? Like whatever. Let's say they're, they're channeling their cast or they're preparing their cast. It's a 25-second cast. When they finish the cast, they full heal the boss and you wipe. Okay, you're kind of going, perfect. I can pop Surrender to Madness on these guys. And then suddenly, double insanity generation, a free void form. I'm going to spam out these Searing Nightmares. I'm going to do crazy damage in that burst AoE, like crazy burst AoE, that's pretty insane, right? That's pretty insane. Again, I, I consider this somewhat execute because obviously, you know, a mob has to be, the mob needs to die relatively in a, in a relatively short time. Otherwise you're going to die. So it's sort of execute-y, kind of. Um, I also consider it somewhat funnel because again, like you're fighting a boss, like if you imagine Nazoth, Mythic Nazoth, you have like these two Thought Harvesters spawn in, they live a, a short amount of time. You pop Surround into Madness on one of those Thought Harvesters. And then like, whatever, let the rest of your team just sort of cleave the Thought Harvesters down. So long as they die within 25 seconds, you're good. But then you use that double insanity to just funnel damage into Nazoth, just spamming Devouring Plague on him. That could be really powerful. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly how powerful it could be, but it could potentially be insanely strong. Um, you just need mobs that are going to die within 25 seconds, and then you can use this as a big burst funnel cooldown and be kind of nuts. For Split Cleave, they're weaker. Arguably, this might actually be over here. I'm not entirely sure, but um, their Split Cleave used to be in BFA. In Legion, this was top tier. Not Definitely not top tier anymore in Shadowlands. It's a lot weaker. Like, you can multi-dot with Devouring Plague, but if you're casting Devouring Plague on a second target, you're not casting it on the first target. Um... And yeah, so the split cleave is decent, but not crazy. Oh, also worth noting with funnel, like with, with an AOE pack of mobs, you can be spamming mind seers, and it's going to give you lots of procs and mind blasts to spam into your priority target. So that's decent funnel too. Um, but yeah, the split cleave, I think is still good, but it's not as crazy good as it was before. But it's still good, right? You can still have your dots on multiple targets spread right around the room, and you're going to be spending your apparitions, your shadowy apparitions on them. It's still decent. And two target cleave, I think is decent as well. Again, with two targets, you can just keep your dots on them. I'd say this actually, it probably, this could be even weaker than before. Um, it's definitely weaker than it was in, in BFA. That was definitely a design goal because if you saw how crazy Shadow Priest was in Eternal Palace, they don't want to repeat of that. So yeah, um, I think their two target cleave is decent because they can put their dots in the two targets, but they're not also, they're not going to get too many resources out of it bonus. Like having dots on the secondary targets, not really going to up your damage much. I mean, I could ar arguably put this actually over here. Like in two target cleave, yeah, they're going to do more damage because you have your dots and your shadowy apparitions at two people. But it's not going to be that nuts. So I think maybe something like this is more what you're looking at. Arguably, this might go up to here. That could happen. Uh, we remains to be seen, but this is broadly speaking my thoughts on Shadow Priest. You can see the struggle. You can see the struggle, right? Because... I, it really depends how good these talents are. If Surrender to Madness is bad, then again, a lot of these strengths differ. Uh, yeah, so it's tough to say, but I generally think that the Shadow Priest, where you're going to be bringing the Shadow Priest now, they are going to do fairly sustained damage. Um, like their burst cooldown, void forms, a fairly short CD. Uh, I think with Surrender to Madness in particular, it's going to give them really, really good burst damage. They've got very good AoE damage with Searing Nightmare. So they can do good single target. They can kind of, they, they're very flexible is what I will say. They're very flexible. It depends on their talent build. You can run them in a lot of different situations. Yeah, let's just leave it with that. For the rogues, for rogues, we've got three rogue specs. Assassination is the first one. Assassination is, is quite sustained damage, right? Stack up your bleeds, stack up your poisons. They're running. They do lean more towards bursts because they have a very powerful damage cooldown in Vendetta which is a big single target burst CD uh, on a two minute cooldown, 20 seconds, big single target damage. So that's why I put them over here, but generally very sustained, but big single target burst. That's a notable thing for them. 
Ramp up versus on demand. I would say they have a lot of ramp up damage. You got to get your bleeds on the targets. You got to generate combo points, generate energy. They're fairly slow. Maybe you could put this over here. Maybe it's a little bit more too much towards the ramp up, but I think they're fairly slow. Certainly in AoE, actually multi-dotting stuff is very slow. So you really have to ramp up for AoE damage. I'll leave them over there. For single target versus AoE, again, I think they're mostly single target. Um, although they are very good at two target cleave. Uh, or like two to three targets. But yeah, in terms of large scale AOE, they're they're quite poor, right? You have to multi-dot and you've got to multi-dot each target individually. It's very slow, lots of ramp up, um, difficult to maintain those dots. They really fall off a lot. If you look at the uncapped AOE, Poison Bomb is uncapped AOE, but that's it. Everything else has a cap. So their uncapped AOE is very bad, very poor, very random. So yeah, single target more so. That being said, compared to the single target thing, two target cleave, they really excel, really excel, right? The way assassination works is when you've got your bleeds on a target and poisons on the target, you're going to get extra energy, right? So when you're fighting two targets, number one, your dots are a lot of your damage. So you're going to have those dots rolling on the two targets, which is going to do lots of damage. And then you're going to get more energy to spend on, on more abilities. So it's going to up your damage output as well. So they're really going to thrive with two to three targets, right? Also, that works with their funnel damage, right? Again, you put bleeds on a second target, it's going to give you more energy, which you can then pump into damage onto your main target. So they're going to funnel reasonably well as well. They're going to funnel reasonably well. Um, maybe I maybe could put this just over here because it, obviously it does have energy cost to keep your bleeds and stuff rolling on that second target. But yeah, they also have decent execute. I've put it up here. They do have a talent. This really remains to be seen with tuning. They have a talent and a legendary, which both boost execute. So this could potentially be a big strength for the assassination rogue. That being said, if that talent and legendary end up being poor in comparison to the other ones, this could be a nothing. So it's hard to say for sure. It depends on the tuning. But seeing as they do have two things, which give them a substantial amount of execute when paired together, especially, I'm willing to put it over here for now. So we'll see. So that's assassination. Again, you're going to bring assassination when you know, you're know you fighting a small number of targets that are gonna live for quite a long time and they're gonna do really good damage to that and they got good, uh, they've got a good single target burst cooldown too. For Outlaw, Outlaw is very sustained damage. They're just, they're just always doing their damage. Their cooldowns come back very quickly. So they're just always kind of rolling with the damage. Ramp up versus on demand, I would consider it very on demand damage. You know, you press blade flurry and you're doing AOE and it's really as simple as that. There is of course a lot of randomness with roll the bones. If you roll good buffs, you're good. If you roll bad buffs, you kind of have to wait about, you know, 20, 30 seconds to get a good set of buffs. So that could bring this more towards this side of the spectrum. There's a lot of randomness there that you don't have control over. So arguably we could move this over here actually. I think that's fair. I think that's fair, but it's fairly on demand. But roll the bones can, can cook you. Or single target versus AOE. They're obviously extremely strong in AoE because Blade Flurry, you just press the button and you're cleaving on like five targets and you have that up regularly. So they're very good at that, but it is a five target AoE cap. Uncapped AoE, nada, nothing, zilch. They have none. They have none. Everything has a target cap for, for Outlaw Rogue. So yeah, it's going to depend on how, how impactful those target caps are. But generally speaking, certainly if you're doing those smaller pulls, they're going to do really good AoE damage, very sustained just, yeah, they can just keep pumping out those blade flurries and keep pumping that sustained AoE damage and be very good at it. For the sub rogue, sub rogue is, I put it around about here. Um, they do really good burst damage in Shadow Dance, but Shadow Dance is a very short cooldown. So it's kind of like these regular burst CDs, a little bit like Havoc Demon Hunter, let's say. So I kind of put them roughly around here. Um, yeah, they, they've got good burst, but it's very on-demand burst damage. Like you, with the, you can have two charges of Shadow Dance with the talent. It's got a short cooldown. So you can kind of choose when to pop that Shadow Dance, when to blast off. Um, you do have a, you got a couple little dots to apply. Like you can apply Rupture, but it's not going to slow you down all that much. You're pretty on-demand. You can pretty much just start blasting targets with Shadow Strikes and Eviscerates whenever you want. In terms of the single target versus AoE, they've improved massively since BFA. They now have an AoE finishing move. It is target capped. Uh, but it is a spammable AoE finisher. So you can do some pretty good AoE damage now. And again, Shadow Dance will also boost your AoE damage. So they can do... I'd say they're they, you know, they're probably more notable for their single target damage, but their AoE damage isn't too shabby either. Um, they also have got very good funnel damage with, with Fan of Knives, right? So Fan of Knives gives you a combo point for every enemy you hit. So if you're fighting, you know, five enemies, you can just go like fan of knives eviscerate on your main target fan of knives eviscerate fan of knives eviscerate and you can kind of do that so you can actually funnel damage fairly well as a sub rogue obviously this was insane back in like legion and the start of bfa the first patch of bfa and then it got nerfed into the ground so it's nowhere near as strong as it used to be but it's still a very potent strength of the rogue for the shamans 
For the shamans, we have elemental first. Elemental, I would say, is fairly sustained damage. It's fairly sustained. They're just always throwing their, their lava bursts. They're getting consistent procs of lava bursts, and that's a good chunk of their damage. Um, we'll see if Ascendance is good. Ascendance is a very big burst cooldown. Um, so they have some notable burst cooldowns. It's definitely not It's definitely not this side of the spectrum. It might move a bit more towards this side, but I generally speaking consider them as they're always throwing their lava burst. They're doing pretty good damage. They're consistently throwing out earthquakes. They're doing good damage. I consider them fairly sustained overall. Ramp up versus on demand. Again, I think they're fairly, I think fairly in the middle here. Um, they're fairly in the middle. Like you have to multi-dot with those flame shocks. There's a bit of maintenance there. You have to generate, um, you have to generate your uh, maelstrom resource to actually throw out earthquakes. So like, you know, going into an AOE pack, you have to spend a bit of time generating those resources. It takes a little while, throw out a few chain lightnings and then you can start getting those earthquakes rolling. So I put them sort of in the middle. For single target versus AOE, Arguably, this could be over here. I would say, you know, they shine a bit more in single target because of their funnel strength in particular. So with Lava Surge, where you multi-dot a little bit, you can have up to three targets dotted. Typically speaking with Flame Shock, those give you these procs, these Lava Surges, which give you those instant cast Lava Bursts, which is big single target damage. That's where they really shine. That's where they really, really shine. It's just funneling all of these Lava Bursts into the one target, but getting more Lava Bursts because they multi-dot with Flame Shock. That's their big strength. That's the biggest strength of the Ellie Shaman, and it's a very big strength. That's where they shine. So I lean them more towards single target. That said, Earthquake is uncapped AoE, and Liquid Magma Totem as well, randomly, is uncapped AoE. Obviously, Chain Lightning, though, is capped. It is capped. So that does slow them down compared to some of the other casters, which have, generally speaking, uncapped AoE, like the Balanced Druid, for example. Um, so yeah, I think they're going to be, notably there, you're going to be bringing your Ellie Shaman when you want them to funnel really that's the big strength that's where ellie shaman is really good where you go okay we've got like two or three targets in this boss fight but we really want you just to focus on the boss just multi-dot with your flame shock and just bam just funnel lava burst in the boss just blast that boss and you're gonna be cool that's the big strength of ellie for enhancement shaman and this was just fairly reworked so i'm not super super sure i think they're more sustained here their damage cooldowns aren't that powerful, so I consider them to be more sustained, just kind of constantly throwing out damage. So very, fairly on the sustained side, uh, side for sure. For ramp up versus on demand, uh, I put them here. I'd probably put them more, I should put them more here. I think that makes more sense. I'd say they're more on demand, right? You're just kind of pressing your buttons and they're doing good damage. You do have to wait for those Maelstrom weapon procs to build up. So they're certainly not this far on the spectrum. Uh, you got to generate your Maelstrom weapons. You have to multi-dot a bit with Flame Shock. Um, but you're pretty much just blasting and, and it's going and you don't have to worry too much. You press Sundering, it does a good chunk of damage. For single target versus AoE then, I think they're going to shine more in AoE, generally speaking, right? Their rotation is going to speed up in AoE with Crash Lightning doing more and getting uh, reduced cooldown on Crash Lightning with your Chain Lightnings. So I think they're going to thrive pretty well in, in, in AoE. So I'm expecting them to be strong there. Crash Lightning. Uh, so for uncapped AoE, Crash Lightning itself does have a target cap. Um, but it then gives you a buff where your Storm Strike and Lava Lash, I think, are going to do just nature damage to your targets. And that will actually be uncapped. When you do your Storm Strike, it's going to do this little bit of bonus damage to like 20 targets nearby. So um, that is uncapped. Crashing Storm, which I believe is this lightning patch you leave on the ground with Crash Lightning, that is uncapped. And Sundering is uncapped as well, which is about a 45-ish second burst AoE cooldown. You fire off this thing in a line in front of you, short line in front of you. It's going to do damage to up to 20 targets there so it's pretty good right uh for the warlocks for the warlocks we have the affliction warlock first affliction warlock is mostly sustained that being said they do have the capability to do a bit of burst damage now with the new malefic rapture um soul shard spender uh, especially for aoe right so for aoe you can just like you can save up multiple soul shards put your dots on targets and then start popping off these raptures and you'll actually do some pretty good burst damage so they can burst generally speaking though i think it's fairly sustained and their cooldowns aren't too nuts so i put them more towards the sustained side of the spectrum for ramp up versus on demand they are notably ramp up based notably ramp up based you have to get your dots and everything it takes time to generate your soul shards there's a lot of time investment. Malefic Rapture does damage to targets. It's instant damage, but that damage is based off of how many dots you have on the target. So you have to apply those dots, right? You have to apply them. For single target versus AoE, I think they thrive more in single target, but they're much better at AoE than they were in BFA. Again, with Malefic Rapture, like you can go into it and you can do a Seed of Corruption, which is uncapped, right? You can apply Corruption to everything. You can drop a Vile Taint, which is an uncapped talent, AoE damage, but it's in dot, a dot and everything in AoE. You do your Seed of Corruption, drop your Vile Taint. You can throw out maybe a couple of Agonies. 
The seed of corruption pops, then you got corruption, you got vile taint on everything in AoE, up to 20 targets, then you start dumping your soul shards into malefic rapture, and you're going to do a lot of good AoE damage burst, like solid AoE damage burst. So I think they're going to be decent at that. More so a single target with like drain soul. So yeah, I, I think that they're going to be a little bit more single target focused, but their AoE is, they do have AoE. They do have AoE now. Again, the Venthyr Covenant as well is currently uncapped for AoE. Um, they have a few bonuses here too, for sure. So I think their execute damage is potentially very strong with the Necrolord Covenant in particular and with the Drain Soul talent where they can channel the Drain Soul and it does double damage to targets that are below 20% health. So I think that's a very powerful execute talent uh, and it's noticeable for a caster to have execute. So I think that's going to be very strong. For Funnel, I think their Funnel is pretty good as well. Their level 15 talent row in particular, which does have Drain Soul on it. We have other things like Inevitable Demises on there where your dots on the targets... So the more targets you have dotted, the more stacks you're going to build up of Inevitable Demise, and then it boosts the damage of your next drain life. So you can multi-dot lots of targets, build up those stacks really quickly, and then do this big single target drain life. So you can funnel pretty effectively. And then obviously the more targets you've got dotted, the more soul shards you're going to get, which is going to let you do more single target damage. So your single target damage gets better for low investment by having more targets there. Two target cleave is, is also very... Actually, this should be higher. <laughs> That's a mistake. Um... Yeah, I mean, the two target cleave is really, really good. Like, you just put your dots on the two targets, which is relatively easy to do. Malefic Rapture is going to do damage to both of them. They're going to be very good with two targets. Uh, their split cleave is obviously also excellent as well. Again, it doesn't matter where those targets are. You can put your dots on them, and then you can, the Malefic Rapture is going to hit them, so they're really good at that too. So that's why Affliction Warlock, is. people are fairly hyped about Affliction. They think it'd be quite good, is they have a lot of really unique strengths there. For Demonology... Demonology is very bursty. It's all about your Demonic Tyrant, which is your one and a half minute cooldown. That's where most of your damage comes from. So they're really all about that. There is a lot of ramp up to it. You have to do a very specific like 10-ish you know, second ramp up to firing off that Demonic Tyrant. So I consider them to be quite ramp up based because of that. And then for single target and AoE, again, they're, they're good at both with that Demonic Tyrant burst. They have uncapped AoE in Hand of Gul'dan, Bile Scourge Bombers, Dreadlash, which is with your, your Fell Stalkers and the Venthyr Governance ability. So they're pretty good at that overall. With Destruction, it gets a little bit crazy because you've got the Fire Destruction build or the Chaos Bolt Destruction build, which does affect things. I'd say generally speaking, they're very bursty with Chaos Bolts and with Summon Inferno. Like when Infernal is down, you do crazy damage. When Infernal is gone, your damage is pretty bad. With Fire Destruction Warlock, though, you do become a lot more sustained. Just doing more sustained like Fire and Brimstone just incinerates, cleaving everything and dropping in your Reign of Fires. These are all uncapped AoE. So then you can do some quite good sustained AoE damage. You're going to be quite consistently good. I'm going to put them over here for now just because I think Infernal is so strong. Uh, but yeah, I think they're very cooldown focused with Infernal. That's sort of my thoughts on it. Uh, for Ramp Up versus On Demand, again, I think they've got a reasonable... You know, they're not crazy ramp up, but they do have ramp up. You got to generate your soul shards. You got to build it up. Um, so yeah, like you, you can't just start blasting like crazy. Like you, you have to generate enough soul shards. You want to get immolate up on your, your targets, multi dot with immolate to get more soul shards. There's a little bit of ramp up there. Uh, so that is worth considering. For single target versus AoE, again, I think they're they're pretty good at both. They can do really good single target damage, just funneling chaos bolts into a single target. They can go for really good AoE, but you have to talent into it. Like you can talent into Reign of Fire. You can talent into channel demon fire or cataclysm, fire and brimstone. They can potentially get good at AoE, but I think it gets a bit... I put them in the middle because they can really go either way. You can really build for very good single target or two target cleave, or you can build for really good AoE damage, and you kind of have to make that choice. I think you can kind of do both, which is why they're in the middle. Um, their funnel is quite weak, but it is there. The more targets you dot with immolate, you know, the more shards you're going to get. So there's a mild bit of funnel. Might not even be all that worth noting. For two target cleave, this is where they really excel in split cleave with Havoc. So Havoc, short cooldown, is going to replicate your spells for a good chunk of damage onto a second target. So when there's two targets, they can be split, spread out. You can just start firing Chaos Bolts at one of them. It's going to fire that Chaos Bolt at the second target. That's where they're really, really good. They can really spec into phenomenal two target cleave and do really good damage there. Finally, for the Warriors, we have Arms first. I consider Arms to be... This one's a little tricky. I consider them to be very bursty. Obviously, a lot of arms damage comes from execute. Their execute damage is insane, right? Execute is where loads of their damage comes from. So it's a little bit, a little bit difficult to then class them on this. I'm gonna count that as burst. Obviously, they got big burst cooldowns with like Colossus Smash and Blade Storm or Ravager, and that's big burst. Um, but they do good two target cleave, really good two, two, two target cleave with sweeping strikes. But when that's off cooldown, they're not really doing anything. So they're very bursty. Um, once they're in execute. They've got very, very good sustained single target damage with Execute or two target cleave with Execute sweeping strikes. 
Um, but because Execute is only a small part of the fight, I'm still counting that very much so as burst. So they're very bursty. Ramp up versus on demand. I think they're fairly on demand. Uh, obviously, you've got to generate rage, and that can be a little bit slow at the start of the expansion, which is why they move a bit more down towards here. Single target versus AoE. They can kind of do both. They can do both. Obviously, with like Warbreaker and Bladestorm, they've got some good burst AoE cooldowns. It's not too bad. Uh, but you can just focus more on the single target execute. Again, they're very, very good at two target cleave with sweeping strikes. So yeah, that's roughly speaking the Arms Warrior. As you can see with AoE, uncapped AoE is a problem for them. Warbreaker is uncapped AoE. Uh, and then the Kyrian Covenant ability, Sphere of Bastion is uncapped. But everything else has a target cap. If we look at Fury in comparison, Fury is extremely sustained. They're just always blasting, always going. Their cooldowns aren't that strong. They're just, they're just always rampaging, basically. Always doing damage. Uh, for ramp on demand, they're just on demand. They're just always doing damage. Uh, for single target versus AoE, they can do both. They're just they're just always doing damage. They can do hit one target. They can cleave to hit multiple targets with whirlwind buffing their their spells to cleave. They can do both. Uncapped AoE though, they're very much working with target caps. Only Dragon Roar, which is a talent, and the Kyrian Covenant ability, which is again optional, are uncapped. Everything else has a cap. But you've been playing with that before. I think relatively speaking, compared to BFA where you had a target cap, but the others didn't. Uh, your AoE is relatively better because of that, but it is still capped. And then again, you have Execute as well. I consider this a, a very solid strength. Not as crazy. I just want to make the difference that Execute is more powerful, I think, for arms. It's a much bigger deal for arms, Warrior, than it is for Fury, but it's still a very big deal for Fury. They're very good in Execute. And there you go, guys. Um, that is, roughly speaking, I think all of the damage profiles. This was a really long video, way longer than I thought it would be. Oh my god. I hope this would be like a quick 20-minute video. I'm really bad at being concise. Oh my god. But yeah, that is, broadly speaking, I think, all the damage profiles, all the different specs. I hope that's sort of helpful. I hope that's helpful. That's sort of what everyone is doing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> there you go, guys. That's it. There are all the... That, you know, I've talked enough. You guys get it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.